So every time the issue of Medicare for All is raised, especially in the media and the pundit circles, the question immediately is, well, how do you pay for it? Oh, how are we going to pay for this? This is massive spending. Is oh, thirty-two trillion dollars? How are we going to pay for that? We're going to how are we going to pay for that? And it's not just from the right wing, by the way. It is members of the media and the supposed left. News media figures like Jake Tapper, Anderson Cooper, as well as pol uh, politicians like Dianne Feinstein and Nancy Pelosi. In fact, back in June, Pelosi said, "Quote," and this is talking about uh, health care and. She might, by the way, make sure that to note that she is not in favor of Medicare for all, but that she's in favor of simply a public option, right? So she says, quote, some of the other issues that have been proposed have to be evaluated on terms of the access they give, the affordability of it, and how we would pay for it. But again, it's all on the table. I'm not talking about, of course, healthcare. The thing is, is that if you don't know the answer to that question, of how do you pay for it and the financial, uh, you know, uh, the, the access that they give and the affordability of these different plans, of, uh, especially the Sanders uh, plan or HR 676, as it's also known in the House. Well, then I've got good news for you. We already know. Numerous studies have been released. You also had a plan of how to pay for it and how to do all these different things released by Senator Bernie Sanders over two years ago. So, and yet, here we go. If you're still confused, there is another new study that was released last Friday by researchers at the Political Eco uh, Economy Research Institute. Now, the paper was revealed at a Sanders Institute gathering in Burlington, Vermont on Friday. Uh, now, while unveiling the study, Robert Poland, he's an economics professor at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and lead author of the new analysis, told those gathered, quote, good news, it's easy to pay for something that costs less. Directly countering, of course, that question. Uh, now, how much less? Well, you're going to love this. According to the near 200-page paper, a lot less. Well, according to the analysis of Senator Bernie Sanders, Medicare for All Act of 2017 the researchers found that based on 2017 U.S. healthcare expenditure figures, the cumulative savings for the first decade operating under Medicare for All would be $5.1 trillion, equal to 2.1% of cumulative GP, uh, GDP, without accounting for broader macroeconomic benefits such as increased productivity, which makes sense because when people are, health, uh, are healthy, and they're not as stressed out about how they're going to pay their bills, they generally are more productive. Greater income equality and net job creation through lower operating costs for small and medium-sized businesses, which I think is also important and doesn't get talked about enough how much it will actually benefit small businesses. Now, the most significant savings in Medicare for All, by the way, again, we're going to go to the topic about what are you going to pay for it? How much money is it going to save? Well, the researchers found that the biggest savings would come in the areas of pharmaceutical drug costs as well as administration. Now, according to the report, when it comes to administration, there would be a 9% savings in total system costs. And that's actually because Medicare does not need as much administration administrative overhead as private insurance companies do. Now, the average insurance company overhead costs are about 12.4%. That's according to an April 2017 analysis of Internal Medicine article by Steffi Wolhander and David U. Himmelstein. Now, a February report from the Center for Economic Policy Research totaled ever overhead costs for private and individual and employer-based plans at 12.3% in 2015. So about 12.5% when it comes to overhead. That's costs that are going to administrators or administration itself, that's your money, your premiums, not going to you, but going to something else. Now, America's health insurance plans found that 17.8% of every premium dollar ends up going to operating costs. So 12, 12, and 17. Now, the ACA made some changes to where you get a rebate if your operating costs cost about 
uh, I'm sorry, over 15 to 20%. So eh, some of that 17.8 would actually come back to you. Nonetheless, when you compare it to Medicare's current overhead, the difference can't be more stark. The current, current overhead for Medicare, which I'm assuming probably would change a little bit as it right now it gets absorbed a little bit by Social Security, um, that overhead is about 1.5%. That's amazing. And if it were to rise to 2%, well, that's still a far cry from 125 to 17% overhead. Now, there's another big part of the savings, and that's pharmaceutical pricing, right? Now, the paper forecasts a 5.9% savings in the system. Now, that would be due, of course, to the government having the power to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies to lower the prices of, of certain pre uh, prescription drugs, or I should say all prescription drugs. Uh, so th that's an important distinction. That's nearly 6% savings. Then, of course, you would save money by establishing uniform Medicare rates for hospitals, physicians, and clinics instead of the hodgepodge system we actually have now. Now, that would actually account to about 2.4% decrease in the costs. Not only would you save, of course, money by doing that, and the government saves money, and by extension, you as a taxpayer, uh, but doctors, of course, wouldn't have to spend a lot of time haggling with different insurance companies and basing treatments on what uh, procedures a particular insurance company would or would not cover. It would actually be better for doctors, and they would actually have uh, or be able to see more patients. That would be ultimately great for this. So now, the report says that these three areas of structural change under Medicare for All can achieve overall about 17.7% in total system cost savings relative to the existing U.S. healthcare system. That is 17.7%. Wow. Hey, man, that's a lot of savings. And that is equal to about $5.1 trillion. In a statement, Pollan said his research makes abundantly clear that the moral imperative of guaranteeing decent health care for all does not at all conflict with the goal of providing cost-effective care. And actually, those th two things go hand in hand. He said the most fundamental goals of Medicare for all are, uh, are to significantly improve health care outcomes for anyone living I'm sorry, for everyone living in the United States while also establishing effective cost controls throughout the healthcare system. These two purposes are both achievable. Michael Leidy, a Sanders Institute fellow, former director of public policy for National Nurses United, added, quote, we really can get more and pay less. So, look, this is yet another study proving how much money we will end up saving under a single payer healthcare system. But of course you have centrists and the right wing that will continue to scream, oh my God, how do we pay for it? No, it's just so much money. How, do you, how are you going to pay for it? No, they never ask. How are you going to pay for the wall? How are you going to pay for Donald Trump's ridiculous wall? Mexico's not paying for it. And Donald Trump wants Congress to pay for it. Well, how are we going to get the money? How are you going to pay for it? That's billions of dollars just to build a stupid wall. How are you going to pay for tax cuts for the rich? How are you going to pay for defense spending? Which, by the way, there was a report where uh, I think somewhere around the last 20 years, the Pentagon has lost, cannot account for $21 trillion of spending. They just don't know where it went. It's gone. It disappeared. It walked out the door. And right into a defense contractor's pocket, I'm assuming. How are we going to pay for Medicare for all? That's the question. That's the question they always ask. <laughs> Look, I'm going to say something, right? Which is probably not controversial. I think all of you probably will agree with me on this one. They don't actually care. They don't care how much it costs. This is nothing more than an effective talking point. They don't care about the cost. They don't care about the savings. What they do care about is their donors. Both the health insurance industry and big pharma 
would lose substantially with single payer. And so they are scared to death about its popularity. That's why the Koch brothers tried and failed to attack it in their own funded study, which found out, despite them really, really trying to make it cost more, found that it actually cost, would cost less. The most conservative study found that it would save $2.1 trillion a year. Oops. I'm sorry, over 10 years. Oops. Wow. So, look, that's no matter that that that's after they goose the numbers, right? Tried to goose the numbers, they still found out that it saves money. There is no fiscal argument to be made. We know it works. We know it costs less. We know it's the right system to go to. So we need to do it already. Over seventy percent of Americans want that. Eighty-five percent of Democrats. So the Democratic Party. Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein should be absolutely 100% on board with their constituents. But they aren't because of their donors. And Republicans, 52% of Republican voters want a single-payer system. So why aren't the GOP looking at it? Again, it comes down to the money. It comes down to the donors. There is no excuse not to enact a single-payer health care system except for pure greed. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm gonna have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.